Today, we are going to be tearing this, the DJI Avata, down. In this video, we're going to be completely taking it apart. I don't know if there's a ribbon cable. Oh, we've got that cable on the side there still in place going through the chassis. So we're going to just unplug him. Walking you through some of its components, showing you its boards and electronics, and then our power distribution and ESC. And then taking a deep dive into how those boards actually work, what the components actually do, and what makes the OcuSync 3 on this different to the OcuSync FPV system that we had from DJI in 2019. Now, if you find this video useful, please do consider supporting the channel via the links in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not have been able to buy the Avata and do this teardown video without your support. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Let's take a closer look at what is going on inside this drone. Okay, so what we're going to do is a complete teardown of the Avata. We're not only going to take the shell off as well as the camera and the GPS, but we're going to take a closer look at the main PCBs in this drone as well, because I haven't actually seen that done yet. Now, I haven't watched a teardown video on this yet myself, so I'm simply going to play it by ear. We're going to remove the motors first of all. I think that's the safest way forward. So removing them means that they will hang off the bottom of the main frame. I'm going to place my screws for all of these in various squares that I have on my table, making sure that we take note of where everything is. When you're doing something like this, it's good to have something to put screws in, actually, to make sure that you don't lose them. And I ended up 3D printing a couple of these. These are my Mads Tech screw holders that you can actually latch together to allow you to keep everything in place. And they're numbered, so it allows you to quickly find everything. I'll probably post the STL up for this. I think I have done it already somewhere, but if I haven't, I will post the STL. That way, as we remove the screws, we can plop them into different places in the boxes, ensuring that we don't get things mixed up. Next, what we're going to do is remove the vision positioning module because that is located on the bottom and I suspect that is one of the first things that's going to need to come off because that will plug in to the main PCB and that then will go through the main frame area. So we'll undo the screws on that, gently lift. There we go. We can see that that flips up. And then what you've got is then a clip-on cable just down here. So very carefully there, give that a latch. And then you can see that the vision positioning module comes free. I'm going to leave the screws in that and place that in there. We're then going to undo the antenna mounts on either side. Now here is where the main antennas are for the OcuSync system. The Avata uses O3, and that's the bit I'm really interested in taking a look at as we actually tear this aircraft down. So I'm going to remove the screws on both sides of that, allowing us to easily lift the plastic covers off. There we go. And then these little covers, I believe, should just pop up and out to reveal the antennas located inside. There we go. That's one. Two. and then that reveals the internal antennas where you can see the cable runs along here, along there, along there and along there to these little PCB antennas located inside. So pop them out gently. Here we go. And you can see that one lifts up there. And if I just show you it there, you can see that it's just sitting in the plastic and it's labeled left and right. So again, we're going to pop that out, free that up to there, and then they go through the grooves in the plastic frame on either side. We're then going to flip the drone over, and we're going to then undo these two screws here, because these look like they actually hold the frame in place. We're going to withdraw them, place them into box number three. 
I'm just going to have a look if there's any others. Oh, and then we have another two here and another two here at the back that look to hold everything in place as well. So we'll do them. Overall, the disassembly actually looks fairly straightforward, if I'm honest. There's nothing particularly difficult at this point that DJI have done with regards to allowing users to actually replace the frame. It is a shame that DJI don't sell motors separately at the moment, whilst you do have the Axis Flying motors available for the Avata. It would be really good if DJI actually sold motors themselves for it. There we go. I can feel that now starting to come loose. There we are. I can start to feel that frame assembly moving. We're going to gently just pop that cable back down in there. Withdraw those at the side. Whether I should have taken the props off is an interesting question. Oh, I still had an SD card slot in there, so that didn't help. Probably better to take the props off when doing this, but give it a bit of a wiggle. There we go. We've then withdrawn the top frame, gently removing it, and then you can see we've then got the base of the drone itself sitting here. And then we've got the main plastic frame. So if we were to have cracked this, we can simply replace that nice and easily. And it's just a few minutes job. Now, this reveals the main base of the aircraft. I'm just going to remove my SD card that I left inside. And what you can then see at this point is that we have our main brain of the unit here in the middle. You've got your power connector, which goes through into the main brain area there too. And then you've got your four motors coming out off either side. One, two, three, four. Looking at this, you don't actually need to undo the motors to remove that frame. I've done it for the purposes of this because we're going to tear down fully. And then you can see that we've got that vibration isolation area up front here for the front camera. You can see that it's all mounted on three isolators. Well, one, two, three there. And then you've got this GPS module at the top with the wiring going down the middle there as well. So what we're going to do next is look at undoing the additional cables. We have a cable that goes down there. We have a cable that goes down here. And then we have a cable that goes there from the inside from the top to the bottom part of the module, actually quite interesting. So. We'll undo these two next. So we're going to undo that screw. We're going to pop him in number four. And this looks like it's got this latching mechanism. Actually, that's really nicely done. So there's not actually two screws on this. You've got a single screw with that latches out. We've got another one over here. So again, we'll undo that. And it would show that DJI have sort of thought about this from a user repairable point of view. And then you've got another one of them there that takes this ribbon cable off the top, which we're going to need to remove. So we're going to undo him. Withdraw that screw as well. Checking its length. Yeah, all three of those screws are the same length. So don't worry about them. And again, a lift and rotate on that. So DJI have clearly thought about user repairability when doing this. We're going to pop that ribbon cable off there. We're then going to gently pop this one off on this side here. There we go. And then we're going to pop this one off over here as well. This one's a bit more difficult. What's interesting, actually, is we can, from the looks of it, remove this top cover. So if I just undo that screw there as well. Oh, we dropped him. There he goes underneath. I'm going to place that in five. And that looks like that may actually allow us to easily remove the top cover to get access to that cable a bit easier. And it looks like it does. There is some sticky pads on that. There we go. 
So there we are. You can see once we've lifted that, you can see we're inside. So we're going to place that there. And that now gives us better access to this cable here, which I believe is the camera MIPI one. This board's actually coming free. There we go. So that is basically the same style MIPI cable as the DJI one. We'll count the pins on that in a minute to check. We're going to unplug this cable from the side here, which comes through up from the bottom of the board. And then I can actually feel that this board came loose and withdrew. And you can see that this board actually unclips from the main unit. So this appears to be the main camera processing board. We've got USB-C, we've got some power, we've got our SD card slot, we've got our MIPI input interface, and then we've got some chipsets over here on there. So we're just going to place him there. That has now freed up this bit. Now what's interesting, now we've seen this, is DJ have like a two half design here. So this board goes in against this one with the connection down there. And so the cooling is being offered to the middle section of this unit rather than just the top area that we saw earlier. So they're actually cooling into that main unit and then out the top. So the next thing we need to do is remove this. And there are two screws for this from the looks of it. We've got one located here and one located here. This one here does have some silicon on protecting it which we're going to need to um, remove. So what we'll do is we'll get this one out first of all. And then I'm just going to gently pick away at this one just until we can get into it. Okay, so I've managed to get the glue out of that. I ended up using um, my tweezers with a bit of heat to actually melt it down because it was quite hard actually on this one so if I now lift that up you can see that it actually starts to withdraw the module and we've now separated off the base plate from the actual main module of the unit itself again you can see that there is some cooling going on here into the main module you can see where the heat compound has been and again you can see there that DJI are actually pushing that cooling into the main frame of the Avata so trying to keep this module as cool as they possibly can. Now we have two connections here we've got this one here which is our MIPI connection for our camera that looks basically the same as the camera on the DJI Digital FPV system connection. And then we've got here this connector, which will be for our compass and GPS module that goes on the top up there. I don't really feel the need to take that off. I might take a closer look in a minute, but we'll get through this first of all. So if we then rotate this upside down, we've then got our main module. We were heading into now where the ESC is located but also we, the RF end of things is located as well. So we'll take out these two screws and then again, gently lift the cover. And then this should reveal the inside of the unit. Again, we've got cooling from there to there. This is the main power and ESC board. So you can see we've got cooling transferring across to there. And then this now should withdraw. I don't know if there's a ribbon cable. Oh, we've got that cable on the side there still in place going through the chassis. So we're going to just unplug him. That plugs in both sides. So we're going to pop that there. And then that releases the main power board and ESC. Now, this is where you're going to need to get to if you're going to change for the axis flying motors. You can see we've got the ESC there with the FETs around there with the cooling. And then we've got the four motors and then we've got some processing on that side of the board. We'll take some closer up images of that in a moment. 
Now, this leaves the final bit of the board, which is the RF area, and that is located in here in the middle. So you can see that this is actually another module within this, and this comes apart. So again, we're going to remove the four screws on the side. For this looks like this will now separate. There we go. So again, we're separating off the wireless side with the cables are clipped in either side there with these little plastic clips. And then that reveals the main RF board inside the unit. There is a screw clamp on the side here. Very similar to how they've done it on the Vista actually that goes over the top of the UFL, so if you wanted to swap the antennas, you could. To me, what is clear is DJI have very much designed this drone all the way from the bottom up to be user repairable. Everything is modular, and then if we pull that off, you can see that's the other side of that heat sink. And then that is our main OcuSync RF board, two sides to it, so we've got it there and there. So if we just look at the boards in the Avata, you've got basically these three PCBs, which consist of main, power and ESC. We've got SD recording and image processing and then RF on this board here. The next thing we're going to do is take a closer look at the boards that I took out in more detail. Now, I'm going to be uploading these images onto repair.wiki, but I'm going to walk you through each of the boards stage by stage. Now, the first one we're looking at here is what I'm going to call the main IO and processing board. This is the one which is at the top, which has our USB-C port. It has our SD card slot. You can see down the bottom here, it has a port that goes to the GPS module. It has the MIPI interface port over here, which goes to the camera and gimbal. It has a bind button on it, which we don't use on the Avada, but there is one there. We have another interface over here, and this is the one that goes to the VPS module. And then here is that cable connection that went from the ESC at the bottom to this board at the top, which is going to be our power input, bringing power into the main board. You can see if we move across, we have this large can. And if we lift the lid on this can, you can see under here, we have mostly power regulation. We can see this because we have an IC here with four coils around it. We have another IC with four coils or inductors. We have lots of capacitance and we have another large inductor here. So the likelihood of the setup on this side of the board is that you have the main power input coming into here, feeding down into here and regulating it down to various other voltages as needed by the board and the other parts of the system. If we move around to the other side of the board, you can see here we have that large interface connector which links up to the other board, which I'm going to call the OcuSync 3 board. And then you've got this large shielded area here with heat compound in the middle. If we lift the lid on this, we will find the main image and system processor, which is known as the E. 3T or the Eagle 3T. This is DJI's system that processor that they're using on their drones to not only run what we believe is their flight control software, but also handle all of the image processing as well. Now, if we compare this to the original DJI FPV system, there was no image processing CPU on board. This processor is what we find in most of their camera drones, and it was what was originally known as the Umbrella A9 on the earlier drones, but they later moved to the Eagle, Eagle 2 and now Eagle 3T. And this is the DSP. It handles all of the camera and image processing to give you that good image quality that we get out of the system. Next to that, you can see that we've got a flash chip, which gives the memory for that system as well. And if we look around, there's various other components. We've got some more power regulation over here. We've got a clock over here, some diodes, and just various circuitry for running that main CPU.
Now, this board is what is handling all of the main processing for the SD recording, the main processing for the flight control, as well as the software on board the Avata drone. Next, moving over to the middle board in the sandwich, and this one is what I'm going to call the O3 or the OcuSync 3 board. You can see at the bottom here, we have our two UFL connections for the antennas, and again, another large shielded area with heat compound in the middle. If we lift the lid on this, what we find inside is what we expect is the P1. This is DJI's main processor for handling their OcuSync system. This has been around a very long time. It's used in the original FPV system. It's used in pretty much all of their consumer drones as well. And it is the base chipset for their OcuSync wireless technology. Next to this, we can see that there's a smaller RAM chip. This is smaller than we've seen on the other processor and actually smaller than what we've seen on the FPV system. And the likely reason for this is that it's no longer a combined ROM and RAM chip, it's just a RAM chip because the ROM is being handled by the E3T. This is what is doing all of the wireless transmission in the OcuSync 3 system. And the interesting thing about this is that it is basically the same chipset that we have seen in the original OcuSync FPV system. It's just DJI are doing things slightly differently. Rather than like in the original FPV system, simply having your camera and MIPI cable coming into the P1, handling image processing on the P1 and the RF side of things, in this setup, they're simply using using the P1 as a modem and offloading the processing for the system onto that Eagle 3 chipset. That is what allows OcuSync 3 to have its better and improved image quality because they're not having to handle all of that processing on the P1. The P1 is quite old now and what DJI are basically doing is offloading that processing onto a more modern chipset but still using the P1 for the main RF setup. You can see under here we still have some additional voltage regulation with another coil located here and down here you can see that there's some heat pads on the back of the board located right where the power amplifiers are on the other side and we'll take a look at that when we move around to that side of the board. Flipping over to the other side you can see we have that interface input and then we have a large shield for the RF system. Lifting the shield under here, again, we will find what we would expect to find, which is the transceiver, which is the IE1000. Again, exactly the same as the DJI Digital FPV system. You then have that transceiver going down into two paths, going down into the power amplifiers located on either side. Whilst I didn't get the exact part numbers, they basically look to be the same power amplifiers as we've seen on the FPV system before and in most of DJI's drones. And then you can see that going down with the filters below out to our two MIPI connections. On the other side over here, you then have what appears to be a bit more voltage regulation over here and just some more filtering and capacitance for the P1 chipset, which is located on the other side. Now, these two parts of the system basically make up the flight control and RF system in the Avata drone and make up OcuSync 3. There is, as I've said, nothing particularly new here. It's just that DJI have added additional processing alongside the P1, allowing them to improve the image quality in OcuSync 3 and take some of that processing off board from the P1, allowing that to simply handle the modem side of things. Whilst this has allowed for improved image quality, there could be the potential for a few downsides here as well, such as slight increase in latency because you're increasing increasing the size of the pipeline in the sense of rather than the image coming in from the camera to the P1 to the transceiver and out, you've now got that E3T chipset in the middle which is handling the processing and that's obviously going to add a little bit of delay and that's possibly part of the reason we've seen an increase in latency in the O3 system compared to what's being advertised with the FPV system for instance. However, we haven't really seen anyone say they've noticed it in real world use. The last board to look at is the main power and ESC board. Now, this is the one most people are going to be familiar with, especially if they're going to be upgrading to those Axis flying motors. Now, the setup on this board is fairly straightforward. We have 
FETs located on either side. So we have six FETs for each output. So one, two, three, four, five, six, two for each phase. And you then have them located either side of these large diodes in the middle with some regulation down here. Now, the FETs on this appear to be QN3120s. I've done some investigation and they appear to be something like 16 to 20 amp rated FETs each. And it appears that they're using two of these per output for each motor, which means you could potentially have around 40 amps of current draw. They do allow up to 100 amp per FET absolute maximum, but real world in ear usage is somewhere between 16 and 20 amps. And this should mean that this ESC is capable of about 40 amps per motor. Flipping over to the back of the board, you will find the motor drivers. These are Spintrol SPD1178s, and there are two of these, one for each side of the craft. We then have our main power output, which goes up to that main board up there. We've got a zero ohm resistor, and it's this side of the board that handles all of the main power I.O., as well as the power monitoring from the DJI system. Now, as I've mentioned, this is the board people are most likely to come across if upgrading their motors to the axis flying or replacing motors in the future. Overall, the layout is pretty straightforward. There's plenty of space on each corner to get to the ESC pads for the motors. And really, you should have no major issues swapping the motors out if you need to do so. Just again, be careful making sure that there is plenty of thermal compound on these FETs. As I've said, they do appear to be in pairs with that 40 amp rating, but you do need to make make sure that they are getting plenty of cooling to that external chassis and that is cooling down then through the drone. The final board I just want to show you quickly is the back of the VPS module. There's nothing particularly exciting here. You can see we have a can with a chipset and then there's another can located here. And this is what's doing all of that image processing for those downward facing sensors. It's basically one sealed unit. I didn't take it apart any further than this because I didn't feel the need to, but it just gives you an idea of what it looks like. Okay, the last thing to look at is the GPS. Now, I've got it off at this point. What we had to do to do this was remove this grey cover. There's a couple of screws at the front here that release that and lift that off. There's also a screw underneath there that allows you to get the GPS unit off. And then this comes off and frees up as a standalone piece. What you have is the cable running up the back here. This is like a sticky cover, as is the little cover under here as well. And what's interesting is I can see some rubber isolators. Now I'm gonna bet the IMU is located in here. And whilst I have a feeling, as I've already mentioned, that the flight control software runs on the E3T, I think the majority of the IMU, the barrow sensor and everything is actually in this unit here. This cover appears to pop on and off. So what I'm gonna do is carefully continue to do that to try and pop this up as we move around with a plastic pry tool hopefully releasing the clips that seem to hold this in place it doesn't appear to be screwed again gently prying up there we go that's popped off a bit faster than i thought and there we go inside we can see our gps module located on the top which is sprung loaded, interestingly. So if we look, the module is actually on this soft mounted area here. And you can see that there's a cable coming over the side there. That looks to be a communication or an RF cable, an antenna perhaps. And I suspect we have our barrow sensor there. Yep, there it is. Under the phone, there's the barrow. And I suspect on the bottom side of this board is our main IMU. Okay, so I've gently unclipped three sides of this. I can't flip it over too much because we have the cable. But if we look here, there is more cans on the back with shielding with a connection there. 
I don't know how easy it's going to be for me to get to that. Let me just go and have a play off camera and we'll come back. There we go. So I've got the shielding off. We have our GPS chipset there. I believe we have our IMU sensors over here. We have a battery backup in this corner down here for the GPS. You can just see it there under the wiring. So this is our IMU our Barrow, our GPS, and likely AirSense antenna, which is that little wire which goes to the side there as well, all located at the top in one unit, which means if you damage this, this is going to damage the IMU in your craft. So that is pretty much a DJI Avata. We have our GPS, our camera module, our VPS. We have our video processing unit. We have our OcuSync 3 unit. We have our power board, ESC and flight controller. And that is everything in one place. It really is interesting to see just how well DJI have been able to package this system down. Now some observations having torn it down are that DJI really have made this drone in my opinion user repairable. It's not just about how easy it is to take apart but it's all of the little extras like the little latches on this cover here that hold the cables in place and just the way they've done it I think DJI did make the Avata with the assumption that users would be doing more than just changing this plastic cover. However, today other parts are not available unfortunately. It would be nice to see DJI release motors, that way users could replace them in the future. I do think DJI possibly could have done plug and play motors on this rather than direct soldering, however they didn't. But it isn't particularly difficult and if you're someone who wants to upgrade it to say the axis flying motors or be able to do a repair you shouldn't have too many problems whilst this is the main bare bones of the system there is obviously all of that that came out of it as well which i'm going to reassemble in a minute but there isn't anything particularly complex here so that is it. My Avata is back together. It is working absolutely fine. And I hope you have found the information in this video interesting. As I've already said, I think DJI have done a fantastic job of the assembly and the industrial engineering on this drone. I really do think it is quite high up on a repairability scale. I like the way that they have sort of thought about people going in there. You have those little latches that hold the cables on. And overall, the assembly is just nicely done. You can get that bottom frame off in literally two minutes and it really isn't much longer than 10 minutes to get the whole thing in bits on the bench. Hopefully DJI will release more parts for the drone in the future, especially for people who do cause damage. I'd especially like to see that combined IMU and GPS module available as well as motors, just giving people the option of being able to rebuild their drone should they have quite a big crash if they don't have DJI's key refresh. Now, if you have found this video interesting, please do let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, please do put them in there and I will try and answer them as well. Furthermore, if you have found this interesting and you'd like to support us, please do check out the link to my Patreon in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons who have supported the channel so far. And if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep making content like this in the future, please do consider checking it out. Alternatively, there's also a link to buy me a coffee there as well, where you can make a donation if you feel you would like to do that. That. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.